Well, we're going to start with a song this morning. Jesus, the light of the world. Hark the herald angels sing. So let's all stand together. And as we gather, sing this fabulous song. This being the first Sunday of Advent, we celebrate the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and we anticipate the change that he makes as he, who is the light of the world, comes and scatters the darkness of the human experience. We rejoice in him. The color, liturgical color for Advent is purple. I invite you to wear purple anytime these four Sundays leading up to Christmas Day and partner with us as we celebrate and as we observe 
this very special season of the year. I have just a couple of announcements. Our pastor-led study of the Psalms will resume this Thursday evening at 7 p.m. If you are not on that Zoom invitation list and you'd like to be in that room for the study, you have merely to call the church office and we'll make sure that you get an invite. We'll be looking at Psalm 128, I believe. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll look forward to that at 7 p.m. Thursday. I think that's really my only announcement. I want to uh, welcome you to this. Uh, those of you who are with us online, thank you for joining us. We know there are many places you could have clicked your way to this morning, and we are honored that you're with us today. Welcome to those of you who are also here in the sanctuary with us. This is a joint service today with the Convergence Church of Stone Mountain, and their pastor and I are in a mentor-mentee relationship, a brother-to-brother -brother relationship, an iron sharpens iron relationship, and you will hear from their pastor, the Reverend Corey Lee, uh, later on in the worship service as he proclaims the word but we are partnering together, we two congregations, trying to see, trying to discern what the Lord might be saying to us as we together uh, serve the people in the Stone Community, a Stone, um, Stone Mountain, not the Stone Community, but the Stone, the Stone Mountain Community. I think Cleveland Robinson is going to come and highlight a few other announcements uh, for our Bless you, Pastor, as well. Good morning. Good morning. And as always, let's do our ritual. <laughs> to our guests who are in the sanctuary and certainly convergence, convergence, good morning. And to those who are visiting us online, we say good morning. And certainly, as always, to my Crossroads family who I dearly love, good morning, good morning, and good morning. That's my favorite, one of my favorite parts of the service. I don't want to not say the sermon is, but. <laughs> All right, now. But I only have a few announcements. Advent is coming. And once again, you are invited to be a part of the group that decorates our sanctuary for this remarkable season. We remember the incarnation of Lord Jesus each year and enjoy decorating the church. This year we will decorate on Saturday, December 4th from 10.30 to 3.30. Please join us. We also appreciate uh, if you can come and help us set up on Friday at 10 a.m. And for more information on that, if you would contact uh, Nancy Scott or Dorothy Jones. Now, Operations Christmas Child. We're almost finished with our part in sending out, out our shoe boxes, but there's still a need for, con com for contributing money for the $9 postage and for boxes, make out for, for the boxes, excuse me, make out your check to Samaritan Purse and not Crossroads and give it to Sharon Gregor or drop it by the church office. We'll be collecting this money until November, the end of November, if I'm correct. They also need your prayers for the boxes and the children who will receive them that they will know without a doubt that God loves them and cares for them. And a special note, thank you for everybody who's contributed time, money, and, and, uh, and your work. There are some uh, special dates for the month of December. Now, I'm not going to insult you by reading each one of these dates, but what I am going to do is I am going to remind you, please look at these dates in your heartline or online. And for those of you who are in the sanctuary, there are some also some pamphlets or uh, a flyer out in the narthex. And this consider this as a personal invitation. So please pick up one, share it with your friends, neighbors, and whomever. But please acknowledge these dates and govern yourselves accordingly. Prior for parents, for those who've been wanting to give toys that won't fit in the shoebox, now until December 12th, we will be collecting these toys for FCS, which is Focus Community Strategies. 
Pride for Parents. That's the Christmas store. A store that sells items at a reduced price. Now these, these items work three ways. First of all, they are, they are a gift to that child, but they also serve as a, 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 a gift to the parent so that these parents who normally could not afford some things perhaps could afford some things through that store. And the other thing, lastly, it gives people in that community of South Atlanta a job. So I'm going to ask that you, you read that and read it responsibly and then act responsibly. There's also a website on here which I will not try to read to you. But I will say, look at your heart lines. Also, it's on the website if that's something that you're interested in. We will now have our call to worship. And I will just find, after a reading, Advent, the lighting of Advent candles. Okay. Will you come forward? Good morning, Crossroads. Good morning. Today, on the first Sunday of Advent, we light the candle of hope. Like the prophets in the Old Testament, we hope for a Messiah to save us from the sin in the, from the, sin in the world. We anticipate our Savior's arrival. Isaiah 9, 6-7 reads, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with, with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Christians can often confuse the word hope for wishful thinking. If we hope something will happen, we have no control over whether or not it will take place. But the biblical sense of hope is very different. Hope in the Bible exists as, an, as a secure assurance, a trust placed in, placed in a trustworthy God. God has not failed us in the past, and therefore, if he claims he will do something in the future, we can have hope that he will fulfill that claim. Hope waits and endures. It isn't, it isn't flimsy or merely wishful thinking. It can withstand fire, trials, and despair. Please bow your head as we pray. Heavenly Father, Advent is a time for remembering and reflecting on the birth of, on the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father. I pray that you would turn our hearts towards you as Christmas approaches. Let us not get caught in the hustle and bustle of this season. This year, in the hustle of this season this year, and miss the chance to celebrate the gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love that you sent to us on that first Christmas. Help us to see that you are with us. Nothing is too difficult, too messy, or too, or too dirty for you. Jesus came to us, Jesus came to give us the hope of eternal life through the salvation that only you, our Heavenly Father, can give when we believe in your Son. Repent our sins and confess Jesus as our, as our Lord and Savior. That first Christmas, you gave us the gift of hope, wrapped in a swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. Thank you, Father, for the immeasurable gift. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Well, now I have our call to worship, and if you notice your, your order of worship, you would notice there's nothing there but an act. 
So I remind us, a call to worship for us here at Crossroads and prayerfully for all Christians is not a request, it's a mandate. It's a mandate that we all should act upon and act upon responsibly. So I ask that you be reminded of that. And I have an opening hymn. Because Emmanuel is God with us and he has come. Let's sing together. <clears throat> Recite our prayer of confession in unison. Be located on your overheads. 
Lord God Almighty, we come to confess our recurrent shortcomings and stubbornness. Forgive us when we fall into the same sins repeatedly. Please have mercy on us for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. An insurance of pardon is taken from Mark 11, 25th and 26th verse. Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him and just drop the issue. Let it go. So that your Father in heaven will also forgive you and your wrongdoings. But if you do not forgive, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you. And the people of God said, Amen. Have our praises. Morning, Crossroads. Good morning. Good morning. Praise God. We are glad to be with you all today. Uh, our worship team is worshiping with you all and together uh, with this amazing worship team here at Crossroads. And so we're just going to praise God a little bit Hallelujah. in the house. Y'all mind if we do that? Amen. amen. We're going to sing something that's familiar to us. We want to invite you to, to worship with us. Hallelujah. Uh, this song is called The Anthem.
okay to lift your hands and worship God in this house. know even though we celebrate the advent in this season our greatest celebration is the fact that he's risen hallelujah amen amen so it is the season of thanksgiving right so it would only be fitting to sing a song that gives thanks unto the lord so let's just do that as we continue to worship our god through music goes like this. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks. Give today. Amen. Let's sing that one more time. Give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with
Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say. Give thanks. Come on, think about his goodness. Think about his faithfulness. Think about all he's done for you. And give thanks. He's been so good to us. Let's sing out one more time. Give thanks. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. He's so good to us. He's so good to us. Amen.
for the chance to see another holiday that many were unable to witness and experience. We don't take it for We recommit to give what we have rather than focusing on what we do not or even what we have lost. We give what is free yet cost us. We give thanks. And in giving this, I believe we will experience the truth and the biblical wisdom that it is better to give than receive and experience a peace, a love, and joy than we ever have before. May the words of 1 Thessalonians 5.18 be inscribed in our hearts and every church for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Give thanks. privilege to talk to God. 
Deuteronomy chapter 4. I was just reading this this week. Uh, the rhetorical question is asked, what nation is there whose God is close to them like God is to us? Moses asks, what God is there? What a wonderful privilege to be able to have this God near us and for us to be near him in prayer. We can just have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear Jesus, tell them all about it. He will answer. Feel the No. pray. Oh Lord, we thank you that you have a will and we have a need to follow that will. We thank you that thou art ever near to us. We rejoice that we are not worshiping some distant deity who is limited to a piece of gold, who is a carved statue. We thank you that you are the living one. And you have reached out to us in Jesus the Christ most wonderfully. And we may be near to you as you are surely near to us, we rejoice and we rest in it, we nest in it. We rejoice in the promise of your presence, your persistent presence in the midst of the chaos that is this world. We celebrate the privilege we have of drawing near to thee. We now draw near in prayer and we thank you for inviting us to come, to tell you all our troubles, to lay our burdens before you, to thank you for what you have done, for who you are and who we are and are becoming. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your patience with us. We have sometimes disobeyed you. We have not done what you have commanded us to do, and we've done that which you have forbidden us to do, and yet you have had mercy on us, and we thank you. Mighty God, good God, patient, long-suffering God, God of mercy, God of light, God of glory, God of power. We bring before you these listed. Audrey Godfrey, John Jankuski, Doreen Wanless. Touch them, Lord, we pray. John has said he's weak. Would you please build up his body continually? Dorothy Johnson and the Colemans, the Richard Coleman family in Ethiopia. Would you please strengthen them for the journey? For Willis and Suzette Gosgrafard in Haiti, we pray. For Edward and Uvalin Patterson, for Cindy Ramey, for John Gregory, and for Jasmine, we pray. Have mercy on Shronda Blake and Alberta Settles and Isaac Wood, who will have surgery in December. Have mercy, O oh Lord. Touch his body, 
Raise him up, restore good health to him, we pray. For Evelyn Wilkinson and Calvin Eason and Rosa Crowley, we pray. Touch, Lord. Touch, Lord. You are the great physician. We pray for Mary Watson and Virginia Griffin, for Mark Brown and Dean Wanless, for Ben Wilkinson Jr. and for Michael Hairston. Have mercy, O Lord. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray your touch upon these and others who are sick, who are not listed, others who are perhaps not part of our faith community, but who are precious to you and who are precious to some of those who are with us today. We pray for those who are still recovering from the death of a loved one, who are still trying to figure out how to go on with this gaping hole in their family circle. For Larry Steele and Margaret Kamalo and the family of Patricia Baines, we pray. Do, O oh Lord, comfort them. We bless you. We pray for the President of these United States, for Mr. Biden and Ms. Harris, for the President and Vice President, that you would endow them with wisdom that they would not have naturally. We pray for our national leaders, for senators and representatives and governors and mayors and county commissioners and aldersmen and all those who give leadership to our governmental structures. Heal them of arrogance and corruption. Fill them with a passion for justice and integrity, we pray. You are a mighty God and we shall ever adore thee giving you thanks in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow, angels bow before him. Heaven and earth, are, oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow, heaven and earth. What a mighty God, mighty God. What a holy God, what a holy God we serve. What a holy God, what a holy God we serve. Angels bow, heaven and earth. What a holy God. What a loving God, what a loving God we serve. What a loving God, what a loving God we serve. Angels bow, heaven and earth. What a loving God, one more time. What a mighty God, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow, angels bow before him. Heaven and earth, what a mighty God, what a mighty God we serve. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God. You might be visiting us this day, whether online or in person here in the sanctuary, and we are happy to have you. We are delighted. We are always expecting visitors. And as these COVID numbers uh, as the numbers of vaccine, vaccinated people rather, goes up, we are anticipating that we will have more and more persons coming through the doors and more and more persons, in fact, joining us online. We celebrate that. But if you are here in the sanctuary today and you are first or second time visitor, would you please stand? We'd like to acknowledge you. We are delighted that you're here. Amen. Amen, amen. Brother Bruce is going to give you a visitor's card. Please fill that out and give it to me at the end of the service or to any one of the ushers. 
and we'll have that as a record of your being here. And if you're visiting us online, would you please just drop an email to Richard Allen Farmer, that Allen is A-L-L-E-N, Richard Allen Farmer 1951 at gmail.com. I'd be delighted to hear from you, and I promise you a speedy and prompt reply. Uh, I'd like to thank you for visiting our services, and I pray that you will come again. He is here. He is my friend. He's becoming uh, a very, very dear man to me. I consider him one of my spiritual sons. I'm old enough to count him as a son, in addition to counting him as a brother. He has a son named Corey Lamont Lee II. Um, we nickname him, he is called Deuce by his family. And you know that I love babies. Uh, I love little ones, and we have the joy this day of dedicating him to the Lord. This is not an infant baptism, but rather a dedication of this child to the Lord. I am one of Corey Lee's pastors, and I am dedicating his child as you would have your pastor dedicate your child. Uh, I do not baptize infants unless one of their parents is a member and a functioning uh, active member of the faith community because part of that baptismal ceremony is that I ask the congregation to commit themselves to being with this family and helping them raise this child. And so for people who are non-members because it is unfair to ask the people to participate in the raising of the child and by creating a community here. So I don't I don't do uh, baptisms of children who are not uh, from the families of members of this congregation. But I am delighted to dedicate Deuce to the Lord and to celebrate with his family his birth and the gift that is Corey Lamont Lee the second Deuce. And would his mother please bring him and his siblings forward if they'd like, if you'd like them to come. They will come as a family. Is Deuce sleeping, Jade? He is. <laughs> All right, then I won't take him in my arms as I don't want to disturb him and have him go into shock. He's now, oh, his eyes are now open. All right. Well, we'll just lightly lay our hands on him. I won't disturb his rest. This is Jade Lee. Both of them, by the way, well, I'll talk about this more in the, in the introduction. But these are their children, Sammy and Elizabeth Joy. That's not correct. Sarah. Sarah, Sarah Elizabeth Joy. Thank you very, very much. And your oldest, yes, I've been wanting to meet Alexis. Wonderful. Good to see you, dear. I want to read from the Gospel of Matthew where Jesus is in the presence of little children. It is a touching passage. I've always enjoyed this passage as the disciples bring children to Jesus and they would really like to get these little folks out of the way. Listen to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 19. Verse 13, then little children were brought to him that he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, let the children come to me. I love that. The old King James Version, suffer the little children to come to me. Let the children come to me and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hand on them and departed from there. Jesus says, I don't, I don't dislike children. They're not a bother to me. Let them come in here. And when we have children in our worship services, I, I just, just love the sound of them. I know, I know it can get noisy. I, I know, I get that. I know. Send them to children's church. I, I know, I know. But it is a, that sound of children laughing, children playing, it was a joy to Jesus, and it ought to be a joy to us. Let us rejoice 
in this new life, in this precious one. I always tell his parents, the deuce always looks at me like I'm from the IRS or something, like, <laughs> like I owe him money or something, and I don't believe I do. But he, he never gives me a smile or anything. He just looks at me like I owe him money. Hey, Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for children. We thank you for the gift that children are. We thank you for what this represents about our future. We thank you for the Lee family. We dedicate this new baby, this most recently born child in the family to you, to your kingdom purposes. I pray that early in his life he would hear of Jesus and early in his life say yes to Jesus. Thank you for his parents' faith and for their infectious way of sharing their faith. I pray that as he hears words of love and as he hears words about you, he will early give himself to all that he hears, all that is a part of his godly heritage. We rebuke the enemy in his behalf. We pray that you put a hedge of protection around Deuce in every way. We pray now in the name of Jesus for Corey Lamont Lee II. Grant him thy wisdom and thy favor and thy protection. We pray for his mother as she feeds into him. We pray for his father as he does the same. We pray for his siblings that as they love him and as they walk before him, he might pick up cues from them as to how he is to conduct himself. Grant light in place of darkness. Obedience in place of disobedience. We rebuke the enemy for your kingdom's sake. Let the blessing of God be all over him, we pray. From the crown of this little head to the sole of these little feet, be thou glorified and magnified, O Lord our God. And we shall ever bless thee and exalt thee. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son who loved children, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Everybody said, Amen. Everybody sang, Amen. 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 Let everybody sing, Amen. Let everybody sing. Amen. Let everybody sing. Amen. 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 We honor the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. We thank you, those of you who have given online, who have authorized bank drafts, who have brought your check by the church building, who have given uh, in some other means. We thank you. We thank you for continuing to honor your commitments. I'm just enjoying great, great blessing uh, of, of the Lord uh, in my finances. I'm, I'm just so grateful, so grateful, so grateful. I have known days of thinness, uh, days of getting down to the end of the month where there was very, very little money there. There was more month than money. You've, you've been there. <laughs> yeah. And these are not those days now. I'm just so grateful, just so grateful. If you're able, would you please stand and let us prepare to give if you're giving this morning, would you please just walk up to the plate in the front? We're trying not to pass the plate and trying to um, reduce uh, a lot of the direct contact in the name of safety and uh, COVID protocols. But please just come and bring your offering. Uh, many of you have given in other ways. 
let us pray together and give thanks for this wonderful privilege of giving. God the giver, we thank you for these resources you have entrusted to us. As we give, we do so with grateful hearts. With cheerfulness, we return a portion of your gifts that Crossroads Church may care for the financially distressed, spread the gospel to the nations, address economic and political injustices, create and sustain ministries that develop disciples of Jesus the Christ. As we give, we pray that you, holy God, will teach us how to give. May our motives be pure, our hearts be glad, and our hands be open. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. thank you. We thank you for another opportunity to give back a small portion of what you've given to us. Now, Father, we ask that you will bless these offerings. Let them find their way into places that are needed most. We ask you to magnify them in the holy name of Jesus. And the people of God said, Amen. The Reverend Corey Lee is the pastor of the Convergence Church here in Stone Mountain, Georgia. He is currently, he and his wife are currently students at the Fuller Theological Seminary in Pasadena, California, distance learning. And I am uh, honored to call him friend and colleague. His wife is going to come, Sister Jade Lee is going to come and pray the prayer of preparation, and then I'm turning the rest of the service over into the hands of Pastor Lee. He'll take us right through to the benediction, and I'm going to come and sit down there so I can enjoy uh, the rest of the worship experience. We are delighted to have you, Lees. This, uh, this is a power couple. <laughs> uh, 
power couple, and we are honored to have you. Bless you. Bless you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I get the opportunity to pray for my husband as he's about to share this word. You could bow. You could bow your heads and close your eyes with me for for a word of prayer. So I'm gonna use this mic here. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this great season of Thanksgiving. We thank you that you have provided every single need, so many blessings for every single one of us, spiritually, financially, Lord, in every area of our life, relationally, as we are entering into the season of event. We thank you for coming down and being with us, Emmanuel. We are reminded today of your presence that is always so near, even when we do not feel you physically. We bless you for every portion of worship that we've experienced today. And now, as we prepare our hearts and we prepare our minds to receive your word and worship through listening, we pray that you will be fully attentive to what, we will be fully attentive to what thus says the Lord through your word. Please be with my husband, Corey Lee, as he delivers this word, and we pray that it will fall not on stony ground, but on fertile, fertile ground. <laughs> May the words of his mouth and the meditation of his heart be acceptable and pleasing to your sight. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. 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 I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Almost 17 years of marriage with um, this amazing, amazing, amazing woman. So I'm, I'm excited that we're here today having a combined worship service. And I, I'm excited. I, I know the audio team is working hard, but I said we are now officially having a convergence worship service. It, it, it's not right until something is going on with the audio. So you can thank us for all your challenges and difficulties today. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to read the text to you, and I, I'm probably I'm going to read it again. But I, I just want to start out with the text, the scripture reading, and it's in. Uh, Genesis chapter 42, uh, verse 9, and I'm going to ask you to go ahead and stand with me if you don't mind so we can honor the Word of God. You know, I'm, I'm a, a millennial, and, you know, we, we've, we've got this whole deconstructing our faith thing going on and, and all that stuff, and so we, we, we like to throw out tradition, and so, too many times we throw out the baby with the bath water, and so... I love honoring God's word by standing for those that are, can't, that, that are able to. So Genesis chapter 42, verse 9. It's a short passage uh, for today. And it says this. Joseph also remembered the dreams that he had dreamed about them. Joseph also remembered the dreams that he had dreamed about them them. I'm going to pray one more time. Father, we, we thank you for the dreams that you've given to us. We thank you for this season of thanksgiving that we can remember all that you've done for us. And while we, some of us are still waiting, we can trust that because you remember what you promised, you will bring it to pass. Lord, I pray that this word would come across clear, concise, but it will also come in a way that would change our lives, starting with me and all of us together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats. Again, good morning, Crossroads and Convergence Church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord again. Amen. Like David, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You know, some people, even if they wanted to, can't go into the house of the Lord. Um, there's a, a man that is partially responsible for, for me being in this area, uh, at ministering and pastoring. His name is Larry Cheek. He's, in the last week, he's suffered three strokes. And um, 
You know, he wasn't, I'm sure he wasn't planning on that. This man has a doctorate in, in ministry and he's been working as a, a, a association missionary for this area for 25 years. He's, he's seen so many churches planted uh, in the Stone Mountain area. And so uh, I just want to, you know, be mindful of him, his, his family. And, and, and it's just a reminder to me that every chance we get, every opportunity we get to watch the screen, every opportunity we get to come into the house of the Lord, I'm going to be glad. Amen. No matter what's going on in my life, I'm going to be glad. This is the season of Thanksgiving. And so I choose to be a person that gives thanks. Hallelujah. I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday of giving thanks to the Lord and and um, I'm grateful to God for all of his goodness. I hope you enjoyed some good food. Amen. I know I did. And if I wasn't wearing uh, this big old suit, you'd be able to see how much I've been enjoying good food. I've been enjoying in fellowship and making memories uh, with loved ones. Hallelujah. So we, we've read the text for today, Genesis uh, chapter 42, but I want to read it one more time as, as we, we jump into this message for today. And it says, Joseph also remembered the dreams that he had dreamed about them, about them. Well, you may be wondering to yourself, who is them? Well, we're going to get to that in just a moment. But we as America, Americans, we, we are in a season that we gather together to remember things. We remember places. We remember events. And, 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 and we are thankful for all of these various things we gather to celebrate. Um, and uh, if you're like me and my family, you have your traditions of celebrating and for the most part, this is generally a happy time that we look forward to, but it is not happy for everyone. Not everyone is feeling like giving thanks during this holiday season. Have you ever been in a situation in your life that caused you to forget about the goodness and faithfulness of God? Have you ever waited so long for an answer to prayer that you forgot what you prayed for in the first place? Has a vision in your life ever been so delayed that dust begins to collect as it sits on life's proverbial bookshelf, obscuring the vision from your sight? Have you ever been in delay? The main character of our text today could probably relate to the world we're living in right now. Or maybe it is better said that we can relate to the world that he was living in back then. You see, Joseph was dealing with a global disruption that was changing the very way of life for all of humanity. We call our disruption COVID-19 and the Bible calls Joseph's disruption a famine. There was a famine in the land. Regardless of what you call it, it is and it was a disruption. It was a disruption. And he here's the thing about disruptions. You, you see, disruptions always disrupt our plans, but they always seem to set the stage for God's plans. Oh, that, that was good. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. See, disruptions always disrupt our plans, but they always seem to set the stage for God's plans. Oh, I, I could just sit down on that one right there in some churches, but I'm at crossroads, so I better preach a little bit better than that. Amen. The last time I was here with you all, I shared about passing on the faith to the next generation. Following that message, I was involved in a conversation that led me to think about our message for today, our message for today. And, and um, 
I, I will share a little bit more about that conversation uh, in, in, in just a few minutes, but I, I need to set the stage for you for just uh, a few more moments and, and, and we're, we're going to make our way. See, I used to play basketball and we used to do this thing uh, called go slow to go fast. You know, some people in the basketball court, they think if I just run fast all the time, then I can get open, I can get a shot. But no, uh, you, you've got to start slow. And then you sudden change of speed and then you get open, you get free so that you can make that jump shot. And so I'm starting a little bit slow this morning, but trust me, I plan to shoot the ball and make a goal. Amen. Hallelujah. At some point, we all have dreams. We all have visions. We all have imaginations of what could be, should be, or what we desire to be. I remember as a young boy having dreams the size of the entire universe. First, I wanted to be a fighter pilot, a fighter pilot in five planes, and, and I'd run around, you know, my, annoying everybody in the house. And the next thing I wanted to do was I wanted to be the first NBA player from my hometown. And the next thing I wanted to do, I wanted to become a high-powered attorney and a businessman. In addition to that, I also remember having dreams of getting married to the woman of my dreams, the, the perfect woman and having a beautiful family. Never did I imagine it would be as beautiful as the family that God has blessed me with. Amen. I'm so grateful. I'm sure that may sound a little bit odd to some people that a, a little boy was dreaming of a family. I guess it's just a testament to the type of family that I grew up in. You see, in my eyes, I had the perfect family. I had, I had the perfect upbringing. Little did I know that my parents had come to faith, one of them just before I was born and the other one uh, when I was an infant. Matter of fact, I just heard my, my mom share her testimony for the very first time of how she came to faith in Jesus Christ when I was uh, three month old. And I'm wondering if she came to faith because of me. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you all a little bit of my story today, but if I told you the whole thing, you could understand why she said, I need a savior. Amen. I will come back to a little bit more of that here in just a moment. But, but I, I want to paint a picture uh, for you of a utopian experience. It is a thing of Hollywood aspirations. I lived a life where the majority of the struggles that I experienced, experienced were related to my own choices. What I mean by this is most of the adversity that I faced in my life came through my pursuit of athletics or doing extracurricular activities. Hardship in my life came from having to run line drills. Anybody played basketball? You have to run the line drills up and down. Yes, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. That is true hardship for an athlete. Or waking up at 5 a.m. and doing strength and conditioning. I didn't have to worry about where food was going to come from or uh, I didn't have to worry about my safety when I was leaving the house and when I was returning to my home. I lived in what I would like to call a God-induced Holy Ghost bubble. I was protected. I was surrounded. It was like the Lord placed me in my little own thatched basket and sent me down the river with an amazing village that helped me to row, row, row my boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. My life, I'm living the dream. Yeah, see, I, I, I was living the dream at that time. But what I didn't realize was there was a predator called racism that lurked in the waters like crocodiles in the Nile River. My, but my village kept them at bay so that I only experienced them in, in, in minor ways. So I, I, was, I was blessed in my, upbring, my upbringing. And, and as I began to grow older and, and become wiser and stronger, I began to excel in life. Leadership came naturally to me, and while my athletic career did not reach the level that I wanted to, I mostly experienced success in my life. 
This seemed to follow me to college and, and, and God, God uh, met me in profound ways when I went to Hampton University. There I joined a ministry and quickly rose to leadership. Uh, I just, God just gifted me in ministry. And so, so I was able to, to become a leader quickly. And my wife and I would eventually become the first couple from our church to be sent out to plant churches. And that's actually how we got to Atlanta. We were sent as church planters and, and missionaries. We were able to travel to Africa and represent the international youth directors of an organization that had hundreds of churches across Africa. We spoke at annual training conferences ministering to thousands of people at one time. We traveled across the, the, the nation of Kenya, preaching to and praying for Kenyan youth, some of whom are now influencing the future of sustainable energy on the continent of Africa. I mean, we were having a good time. We inspired doctors to start clinics, encouraged people who were experiencing infertility. We prayed for the sick to recover and much, much more. In, in many ways, we experienced a life of favor and blessing. Time would fail me to speak of the illustrious, illustrious uh, athletic career that my wife had, who, who was a junior All-American and was recruited by every major Division I track program in America. I mean, she literally had trash bags full of recruiting letters. Y'all didn't know that, did you? She's faster than she looks. She went on to help build a dynasty at Hampton University, setting 11 school records and experiencing six team championships between indoor and outdoor track. She was an MVP and she could have pursued MB, uh, uh, excuse me, the, the Olympics immediately out of college like many of her teammates did who actually went to the Olympics and medaled. And to top all of that, she was encouraged to pursue graduate studies after nearly converting half of her English department during her senior thesis. And I got a chance to watch it and they started arguing with each other like, she, she means this and she means that. And what she was talking about, she was talking about, her, her thesis was about the divine logos who literally brought freedom to African American sla slaves. See, I don't have time to tell you all about our adventures, but what I want to do is let you know that my wife and I in many ways can relate to Joseph from our text today. You see, like Joseph, I have lived a fairly privileged life of favor and blessing. I had not known the hardness, hard, hardness in life. Uh, I didn't know that hardship could exist. I seemingly only knew how to win. Well, except for our basketball team. You know, we had our share of losses and, and, and we became quite familiar with losing. But see, this is the story of Joseph, right? This is the story of Joseph, the favored son of Jacob. Now, we know that Jacob had encountered and, and conjured up enough drama uh, to cover all of his ancestors and his descendants. And he managed to do that all in one lifetime. Amen. But Joseph, however, was given the royal treatment. He, he, he didn't necessarily have all of that drama for the beginning of his life. He did not have to partake in the rugged chores of tending to the flocks like his brothers in the field. He was shielded from the temptations of being far from home. The path of his life was crafted by Yahweh, and I'm sure neither his parents nor his siblings had any idea how significant their actions would play in his formation. Again, I want to take a moment to pause to encourage some of you. Okay, and, and, and I want you to be encouraged that, 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 that God has a plan for you. And, and I'm going to encourage you by finishing the story that I began earlier. You see, uh, uh, after I met with you, after I spoke with you last time, two things happened. Uh, two providential uh, occurrences happened. The first was uh, I was uh, able to speak with a member of Crossroads, and, 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 and I was really blessed to speak with them. And, and we were sharing about the message and uh, talking about uh, sharing the faith with the next generation and, and this person asked me a question they, they asked a question what do you do when you done all the things that you talked about in your sermon and yet the young people 
in your life still have not found their way to Christ. What do you do then? What, did, what do you do when you've got Ebenezer signs on the front door and the back door, on your car window, in the garage, at the parking lot of your children's school? You've told them the story time and time again, and yet and still it seems like they're not getting it. They've grown up. They've begun, be, be, begun their own families. They have children of their own, and they still seem far from God. What do you do then? I was gripped by this question because I knew it came from an intimate place, a place of experience. This person had lived a life of faithfulness to God and yet was not seeing the answers to prayers for the next generation. They were experiencing a disruption. They were experiencing what I would like to call frozen dreams and crazy things. So what do you do then? Have you ever been at that place, the place uh, that it seems like you have done everything that is required of you? You've passed every test and you've kept a good attitude. You have lived upright before the Lord, yet and still you are not seeing the fruit of your faithfulness in the next generation. What do we do then? What do we do then? I'm, I'm going to come back to that question before we finish today. And this is the second thing that happened after the last time I, I, I preached here um, was I received a phone call from a, another person of this, this church who, was co who connected me to a ministry that I'm now actually becoming a trainer for to help equip families pass their faith to the next generation. This ministry has developed a plan to help families trace their spiritual lineage and to preserve it and pass it on to the next generation. And I believe that's directly related to me speaking that message here at Crossroads. And a funny thing happened this week. I, was not, I wasn't expecting this, um, but my, my mother sent me a picture today of my genealogy. I hadn't seen this before on, my, on, on her father's side. And it goes back to my great, great, great grandfather. And I found out that he was the chief of a, Cher a Cherokee tribe here uh, in America, in Arkansas. And I was like, wow, what an amazing thing to find out. And this is what I found out about tribal chiefs is, is that they perform weddings, they give wisdom, and they encourage their uh, tribe. And I thought, you know, this sounds a lot like a pastor. Somewhere in my spiritual lineage, there's this gift to encourage and to pastor people. And so I was blessed to learn all of that. So these two in, uh, events caused me to think deeply about how to respond. How do we respond to that question of what do you do when you've done all you can and they're still not coming to the Lord? What do we do when we've done all we're supposed to do? These thoughts led me to Joseph. A young man with the favor of Yahweh on his life. He had the affection of his father. He had received the finest training in the land. He was more than likely going to end up running the family business. Then all of a sudden something happened. Joseph experienced what my wife preached about a few weeks ago called a divine disruption. Joseph was ascending the proverbial ladder of success in his family line. He had, two, he had just had two dreams of glory and and elevation he saw himself raised above his kinfolks he could feel greatness rising up inside of him he was sure his future was bright he knew Yahweh was going to hear and answer his prayers but then suddenly without warning life violently snatched Joseph off of Jacob's ladder and cast him into a pit this was the beginning of a 13-year journey in the shadows. His life shattered, his dreams frozen. You see, it is in the shadowy tundras of life that God forges faith inside of us. We are presented with many choices in that valley place, too many to name, but they all come down to a few basic decisions. We can either give up on God and abandon our dreams, or we can trust God as he leads us through life's craziest things. 
Look at Joseph. God sends him two amazing dreams. Then his brothers decide to kill him for dreams he didn't choose to have himself. Me and God would have had to have a conversation. I was like, all right, you know, you can stop sending dreams, okay? Because these people out here are crazy. But, 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 you know, uh, I, 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 granted, you know, Joseph probably shouldn't have told his brothers. I mean, he should have known that they were a little thrown off. They, there was something a little bit off with them. I'm just saying, he, he probably should have known that I shouldn't share this with them. But what happens is he shares it. They plot to murder him. Reuben sa saves him. He gets sold into slavery. That's crazy. Somebody say, that's some crazy stuff. See, the favor of God is on his life, so he ends up prospering even as a slave in Potiphar's house. Then more crazy shows up in his life. Potiphar's fine wife starts hitting on Joseph and trying to get him in the bed with her. Somebody say crazy. I mean, this is Netflix-level drama going on in Joseph's life. I guess he did inherit some of that from his daddy, good old Jacob. Amen. See, Joseph does the right thing, she lies, and he gets locked up. I mean, that's crazy. Crazy. But the favor of God is still on Joseph's life, right? He, he prospers even in the dungeon, and eventually he, he's joined by the king's cupbearer and the baker. Now, let's just stop here, and, and, and let's just kind of imagine, okay? I, I just, I just want to just think about what this picture uh, uh, what was 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 looking like so here you have you got a kid who's literally from the middle of nowhere right I mean God tells you know Jake, uh, Abraham to go to the middle of nowhere I'll show you where it is so his, his ancestors grow up in nowhere he comes to Egypt and somehow gets in jail he becomes a slave in Potiphar's house uh, who is the the most powerful uh, one of the most powerful leaders in Egypt and then the most powerful man's wife lies on him causing Joseph to be in jail and now he's on cell block six with Pharaoh's cupbearer and the baker. I mean, this is crazy. Can, can you just hear the conversation between these three? It's like, hey, uh, what's up, man? What's your name? Hey, I'm Joseph. Uh, so, so what are you in for? Well, the baker starts, starts out, well, um, Pharaoh didn't like my pie, so that's why I'm in. They all nod like, oh, okay, I can see that. I can see that. Pharaoh's got a kind of temper. Um, and, and then the cupbearer says, Pharaoh had a bad day, so I'm here. Well, okay, that, that sounds plausible. And then, again, they all nod. And, and, and the next the thing, they, they look at Joseph and say, so, so what happened to you? And Joseph tells his story about being sold by his brothers, purchased by Potiphar. Then somehow his wife hit on him and tried to sleep with him. But Joseph said no and ran away and falsely accused. And he looks at them and says the famous word of every criminal of all times, it wasn't me. I'm innocent. I didn't do it. Can you see the cupbearer and, and the baker looking at one another? They're, they look back and forth and, 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 and they look at uh, Joseph and they, they're silent for a moment and then they burst into laughter. <laughs> Come on, man. Tell us really what's going on. That was a good one, but why are you really here? See, this was the craziness of Joseph's life. Now, we stand here looking at this story thousands of years removed from Joseph's situation, and, and we can say that that was some crazy stuff that Joseph went through, but we rarely recognize that the same kind of crazy that has moved, has moved in next door to our lives. It has visited us on occasion and and maybe you haven't been sold into slavery and, and maybe you're not in Potiphar's dungeon but yet and still disruption has occurred craziness has arrived and you have found some of your hopes and dreams frozen maybe like Joseph they have been frozen for many years now I want to encourage somebody today that Romans 8.28 is still true, alive, and well. Our God causes all things to work together for good for those that love him and are called according to his purposes. You see, the reality is, I'm sorry, I'm getting excited. I keep clapping. Let me calm down. You see, the reality is Joseph's situation was only a temporary place of preparation for his dreams. 
At that moment, those dreams were frozen, but the, di the, the distribution um, of, of that dream, uh, uh, that, that, that coming to pass, that, that fruition, uh, the, the, that, that disruption in his life was setting the stage for those dreams to come to pass, to come to fruition in God's appointed time. I don't know if you've studied the Bible a whole lot, but it seems that God has an appointed time to do things. Amen. You see, we have our own timetables, but he has this thing called an appointed time. And I've become quite frustrated with God's appointed time several times in my life. You see, there's an appointed time for everything in our lives. And that appointed time is rarely synchronized with our dreams and our plans. And often God has to freeze our dreams temporarily, allow crazy to come by and pay us a visit in order for to prepare us and the world for the dreams God himself has planted in our hearts. It's just a little bit of preparation. Sometimes your dreams are not frozen because you are not ready. Sometimes your dreams are just frozen because the world and the people around you aren't ready to live your dreams with you. The world doesn't see the gift of God in your life, so the Lord has to freeze things temporarily until he can bring them to fruition later on in your life. Meanwhile, in the in-between, in, in between the, 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 the beginning and the end of the thing, God is working some things into your life and, and, and other things out of your life. And at the same time, he's working some things into your friends, into your families, into your coworker, into that boss that keeps working on your nerves. He's working some things in them and working some things out of them in the in-between. Or, or, or whoever the person that gets on your nerves is uh, that, that, that's, he that's keeping you from walking in your big dreams. See, see God is working something in their life and, and eventually he will unfreeze those dreams so that they become a reality and, and they don't become nightmares. Because if, 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 if our dreams were to become reality in our timing, they would probably end up nightmares. And so, so God says, I'm not going to put my dreams in your hands. I'm going to put you in my hands and let things come together in my own timing. Can somebody praise God that he does things on his way and not on our terms? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cause I'm telling you, if, if some of my dreams would have came to pass, they would, they would have become nightmares that scared Stephen King. Hallelujah. So, so I'm grateful that God works things out. What I'm trying to tell somebody today is that while you're in the place of frozen dreams and crazy things, remember that gold, God holds all things in his hands. In the fullness of time, God will make everything beautiful, even out of your own ashes. As I prepare to close today, I have to look back at our text because our text finds Joseph 20 plus years removed from his original dreams. He is now the governor of all of Egypt, second only to Pharaoh. He is married and has experienced levels of restoration in his life. Yet it was another divine disruption that brought Joseph's dreams to pass. As the Pharaoh's dreams had foretold, a divine disruption um, happened in the land. There was a great famine upon the world and it was consuming all of the plenty of the first seven years that were to come that, that Joseph saw in the dream. And because of Joseph's training at home with his father, because of his training at Potiphar's house, because of his training in the dungeon, you see, sometimes gotta, God's got to take you on a detour to prepare you for the thing that he's setting you up for. Amen. Come on, somebody. And, and, and so he was in the dungeon. He didn't give up on things. He just kept developing his skills. He kept developing his skills. I wish I had some young people in the house because I would tell them, man, if things aren't working out the way that you want them to, just keep developing your skills. Keep developing your skills because someday those skills are going to help you pay the what? Bills. All right. I can drop the mic. Bars. We must learn to cultivate in the time of disruption. Amen. We've got to acquire the skills. So, so, so we put all that to work. So combine all that with the, 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 the direction of the Holy Spirit. And, and now he was able to devise a plan to 
help them survive that calamity. Again, brothers and sisters, you may not understand your journey or the journey of your loved ones, but I am of the opinion that God knows where we are going and what we need to get where we are going. Amen. He knows everything. He knows how to get us to where we need to be. We must learn to trust God when we can't trace God. As one of my uh, previous mentors and a spiritual grandfather used to say to me before he went on to be with the Lord. You see, we are people of faith. We are people of faith. Therefore, we must anticipate faith challenges coming our way. This includes frozen dreams and crazy things. See, let's get back to Joseph. He is a powerful man. He, he, he's this powerful man in Egypt managing a massive humanitarian crisis when all of a sudden he hears a voice and sees some familiar faces. All of a sudden, he sees the people who orchestrated his exile into Egypt. Now he's in a position of power. And he could have easily exacted vengeance on his brothers. But instead, something else happens to Joseph. And this is what our text says. Go back to Genesis 42, and I'm going to read verse 6 and 9, and I'm almost done for today. And it says this, now Joseph was governor over the land and it was he who sold all, sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed themselves before him with their faces to the ground. When Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them, but he treated them like strangers and spoke harshly to them. Where do you come from? He said, they said, from the land of Canaan to buy food. Although Joseph had recognized his brothers, they did not recognize him. Verse nine, and then all of a sudden, Joseph remembered the dreams that he had dreamed about them. You see, sometimes it's the divine disruptions of life that help bring alive the dreams that have been frozen for so many years. In all of this, Joseph remembered the dreams that he had. See, beloved, this is the key. This is what we need to do when our dreams are frozen, when craziness comes to visit, when disruption alters our plans. We must remember the faithfulness of God. We have to remember. Somebody say remember. Y'all know that, that movie, The Lion King, little Simba, he's grown up now. He's at the water, and, and, and he's hearing his daddy's voice say, remember. Remember, and he's like, oh yeah, I remember who I am. See, we have to remember who we are and whose we are. Come on, somebody. We've got to remember that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. We are children of the King, and that no matter what life throws our way, we can get through anything, even including frozen dreams and what? Crazy things. When disruption alters our plans, we can still trust the man, the man up there, upstairs. We must remember the faithfulness of God like my mother used to tell me. Son, she used to say, she used to come here, come here, sweetie. Say, you got to remember, son, who you are and whose you are. She always used to tell me that's something that stuck close to my heart. You see, in that moment, Joseph's dreams went from frozen to realized in his mind but you know what the craziest thing was he was already living his dream sometimes we're we're so caught up in what used to be or what should have been and what could have happened that we don't even realize that we are living our dream right now if we would just take time to remember what god said and what promise and give him thanks we can start living the dreams we had always desired to live all of the obstacles and downfalls that he had experienced were no longer seen as stumbling blocks. Rather, they were now seen as stepping stones to getting him where he needed to be. They were alternate rungs on God's ladder for Joseph's success. My brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you that whatever dreams have been frozen in your life, wherever crazy has shown up, God knows how to defrost your dreams and make sense out of your crazy things. So much so that you can come, you and I can come to the revelation and to the place of hope and healing the same way that Joseph did. After his brothers finally realized that Joseph is, who, who, who Joseph is, they're standing in front of him and they're terrified. Excuse me, they're terrified. They're thinking, oh my, he's going to remember what we did. He's in, he's in charge now. We in trouble now. 
But this is one of the, this is where Joseph makes one of the most profound statements in the Bible. And this is one of the keys to overcoming frozen dreams and crazy things. See, years have passed by. His family has now been reunited. Uh, Joseph's father has gone on to be with the Lord. And he is still governing Egypt when Joseph makes this statement uh, uh, later on, uh, further down in Genesis. Uh, and, and it says this, Genesis chapter 50, I believe it is, verse, verse 20. It says, even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today friends the devil has intended to do you harm he's coming after your friend he's coming after your families he's come after your finances he's come after your relationship he's come after everything that's near and dear to you and he meant it for evil but i'm here to tell you that the god i serve intended it to turn out for your good it doesn't matter what he was planning it doesn't matter what he was plotting it doesn't matter what he was thinking it doesn't matter what he was thoughting it doesn't matter what he was trying to do all that matters is what God plans to do and how he's going to bring you through the very valley of the shadow of death and so today we can stand with our heads high if you're still waiting on a promise I could have church in here today y'all done got me excited if you're still waiting for your promise today I'm here to let you know even if your dreams are frozen even if crazy things are all around you God is still the God of frozen dreams and crazy things and if you can just keep holding on to God's unchanging hand he's gonna bring you through that storm all we have to do is trust in Jesus he is faithful to do exceedingly abundantly far above what you can ask or ever imagine so my brothers and sisters today is a day to respond in faith today is a day to respond in faith. And I want to do a little something uh, different today because, because someone in here has, has been living with some frozen dreams. Frozen dreams about your children. Frozen dreams about your grandchildren. Frozen dreams about that business you wanted to start. Frozen dreams about that ministry you were supposed to start. Frozen dreams about something. Or maybe you know somebody else that's got frozen dreams. And I'm here to tell somebody who's living in those frozen dreams, today the sun is shining and melting the ice. Not the S-U-N, but the S-O-N, the Son of Man, is shining on those frozen dreams. And that's my assignment today, is to help somebody remember the dreams of yesterday and to remind somebody that our God is faithful. He is not slack concerning his promises. He will come through. So what I want to do, I want to be like Billy Graham. He used to say this thing at the end of his crusades. He said, won't you come? Today, I, I want us to encounter the Lord. I, I want us to, 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 as a corporate body, I want to invite you to stand with me. We're going to close out in prayer. But if we can, if we can um, turn this mic on, because I'm, I'm going to move a little bit. I, don't, I don't, not only want to uh, encourage you to stand, but I'm going to invite... And this may not be familiar with some of you, but I want to invite some of you to come to the, the front. I want, to I want to invite you to come to the altar. And today is a day for dreams to be restored. Today is a day to encounter the God of your salvation. Today is the day to encounter a God that unfreezes dreams and makes sense out of crazy things and and what I want to do is I, I want you want you to come and counter God and 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 the praise and the worship team we're gonna we're gonna sing over you uh, just a little bit but this is the time we call it the time to encounter God and and moments as we're closing today I want to invite you to come to stand with me in faith to come and encounter the Lord come to front if you've got those frozen dreams we're going to believe that God is going to speak to you that he's going to encounter you today maybe it's for a friend maybe it's for a family member maybe it's for a grandchild but I believe that God today wants to start something fresh and new in this place I believe that some of you have been dreaming of young people being in this house 
this house being filled with the laughter of children, of the, this house being filled with young people that can praise and worship God. And I believe that the Lord is up to something. I believe that some of the dreams that you dreamed years and years ago, and it seems like they're not coming to pass, I believe that God wants to activate some of those. It may be a midnight hour miracle, but I believe it is the Lord that is, wants to come. So we're just going to sing over you. And as we're singing, I just want you to talk to God about those dreams. Some of y'all haven't talked to God about these frozen dreams for many years. Some of y'all, you forgot them. You let them go. You said it's not even worth talking about. It's so painful. I don't even want to bring it up anymore. But I, 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 want to, I want to let you know that God is here. He wants to encounter you. This is your time. This is between you and the Lord now. The worship team and I, we're just going to minister to you. Amen. So begin to encounter the Lord. Talk to God, however that is. If it's contemplative and quiet, do that. If you need to actually speak words, do that. Amen. But we're going we're gonna to talk to the God who is Alpha and the God that is Omega. Amen. Hallelujah. You are Alpha. to shine on them. I pray for the hardness of life to be melted away. I pray for those frozen dreams to be awakened right now. Lord, we pray for those that are far from God to come to you right now. We pray that you would encounter them by your spirit. We pray, Lord, that you transform lives. And I pray, Lord, that this house would be a house 
teeming with life in young people, young adults and young families, young children, because there's something that this church has to give to this community to pass on to the next generation. So Father, I pray that you activate the dreams of all those that are standing here today. So let's sing that one more time. We give you all the glory as we wrap up. We give you all. somebody somebody put the put your hands together and celebrate the Lord as you go back to your seats has been frozen crazy is surrounding me and I need a change and he will come in it's a simple prayer ask God to forgive you for your sins confess them before the Lord find a local church to become a part of and that will start your journey to discipleship well saints I appreciate the opportunity to be with you and I want to invite you to stand as we prepare to be dismissed So in the tradition of my mentor, my spiritual dad, see, he, he, he's, he said it now, so now I'm, I'm going to call him on it. Dad, I, I, rent's due. Uh, dad, dad, I, I, I got some bills to pay. Dad, I, 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 need, I need a few things. I'm, 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 I'm going to follow that tradition, that legacy. Um, but, but I want to give the benediction as we prepare to close out. Um, and I just want to invite you to keep your eyes open. And I'm going to say the prayer of blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace or shalom or flourishing. May your life flourish May your dreams be unfrozen. May crazy make sense. And may you go in the peace and blessing of the Lord. God bless you. We are dismissed. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Worthy.
his word. 